California and they think of San Francisco, Los Angeles, the big city. They think of Malibu. They think of the mountains. They think of these romantic things. But a lot of California is not that. A lot of California is very simple and normal. The town that I grew up in is so boring. It feels deserted. It feels like a ghost town. And it's always sort of felt like a ghost town, but it feels even more like a ghost town now because it just feels like things are shutting down left and right. Every time I come back to visit, another establishment has shut down. A good example of that would be my elementary school. My elementary school shut down. It's all boarded up. It looks exactly the same as when I was there. Like I remember we did this art activity as a school one year. A bunch of kids painted these tiles myself included, and they put them up in the hallway and they're still there and mine is still there. I really don't want them to fully tear down the school, but also like, who cares? Build a shopping mall, fuck it. Build another shopping mall, fuck it. I used to walk to school almost every morning with my dad and we would gossip, to be honest. On the way to school, we would gossip. I hate to admit it, but I am born and bred to gossip. Like I've been gossiping since I could talk. My dad and I would be walking to school and I'd be like, this person just started dating this person and they've been holding hands in the hallway and it's so cringe. Ew, it's so cringe. Or I'd be like, you know that girl? Yesterday she went into my desk during recess and she stole my stickers. Stickers were a big deal in elementary school. Everybody collected stickers and it was like a form of currency. Like we would like trade stickers. We would also trade rocks and we would also trade erasers. So now I'm realizing I was born and bred for gossiping and for drug dealing. It's in me. Actually, no, sorry, not drug dealing. Let's say entrepreneurship actually, but it did have a drug dealing vibe. It was all sort of under the table because I don't think we were allowed to sell things or trade things at school. I, I don't think that was allowed. So it was all very hush hush. El Crystal had terrible school lunch, but then again, like when is school lunch ever delicious? Almost never. But there was one school lunch option that was unbelievable and it was called Galaxy Pizza. They were these prepackaged circular pizzas and the pizza sauce was spicy. The lunch lady would always cook them a little bit too long so they were crispy and the cheese was burnt. Oh my God, I would fucking do anything to eat another Galaxy Pizza. Oh my God, they were so good. And whenever they had Galaxy Pizza at school, I would tell my parents, no need to pack a lunch. I need 50 cents or 75 cents or however much it was because I'm getting that pizza. Yeah, I'm getting that pizza. And they'd serve it with a little carton of milk and I would drink the milk and I would hate it. I didn't really like milk, but I would drink it anyway. Pizza and milk for lunch, like that is just so bad. That is so bad, ugh. Too much dairy, too much dairy. I was definitely an anxious kid. I remember going into the bathroom in moments of anxiety, although I didn't know it was anxiety yet. I just felt scared and I didn't know why. But I remember in moments of anxiety, I would go into the bathroom and I would suck my thumb because that was something that I did until I was like 12 years old. I sucked my thumb. I'd go into the bathroom in the middle of the school day and have a thumb break. I'd just take a little thumb break. What? Listen, I'd head into the stall, sit down on the seat, close my eyes, put the thumb in the mouth, suck on it for a little bit, open my eyes, remove the thumb, get back to it. Didn't harm anyone. Actually, it did harm me long term because sucking my thumb destroyed my teeth and gave me a really bad overbite. And I also think it gave me some jaw issues, which then I had to correct with braces years later. And wow, I had a terrible orthodontic experience. Is that the right word? I had a terrible experience with braces. Oof. 
I had braces for so long and I had the most inconvenient appliances. I had neck gear. I had all these weird wires and bands and stuff in my mouth all the time. It was terrible. Um, all because I sucked my thumb. So warning, but also no regrets because I would have been a nervous wreck if I did not suck my thumb as a kid. And now I have an oral fixation as an adult and yeah, it's not good. I fell in love at El Crystal too. Yeah, I did. You'd think, oh, Emma, you were a kid. You know, you hadn't even hit puberty yet. What do you mean you fell in love? Oh no, I did. I did. There was this one boy. Oh, I was obsessed. I was really boy crazy, like a stalker. Not actually, relax. But I was definitely obsessed. This boy consumed me. I wonder what he's doing now. I tried to find him on Instagram and I couldn't. I don't even think he has an Instagram. Oh, what I would do to find him on Instagram. Nope, can't find him. We never dated or anything, but he did kiss my hand once. And that felt really good. I, I never found out if he liked me back. I don't think he did, but that's okay. I at least got the kiss on the hand. No, if he kissed me on the hand, he had to have liked me back, right? Today, actually, I was at my local Trader Joe's and I saw a kid that was in my elementary school class. And I didn't recognize him, but he came up to me and he was like, is your name Emma Chamberlain? Because I think we were in the same elementary school class. And I was like, that's fucking me, dude. That's me, what's going on? Every town has their main street, you know? The street where all the restaurants are, the street where all the businesses are, like it's where all the business is, right? My hometown has that, but let me tell you, nobody's making a special trip to my hometown to visit this street. There's not a lot going on, okay? It's very, very sleepy. Locals hit that street to hang out just because it's close by, you know? not because it's a vibe. It's not a vibe, it's not. But that's actually what I think is charming about it. I especially spent a lot of time on the street when I was under the age of 10 because it was all I knew. I will say though, there are a lot of hidden gems on this street. One of my favorites would have to be my dad and I's go-to market. We would walk to this market all the time. My dad would get the groceries that he needed. And you wanna know what I was doing? I was looking into the pastry case. This market had an iconic pastry case. There were so many, so many good looking pastries in there. Specifically, I used to get churros a lot from there, but there was this other pastry that was in the pastry case that I never tried because I was always allowed to get one pastry and I always wanted the churro. Like that was my priority. This other pastry was enticing to me, but not as enticing to me. So I would always choose the churro instead, even though I really did want to try this other one. And I've always wanted to try it. It's fucking amazing. It is dry. It is, but it is good. I love it. Also on this street, there was my swimming class. When I was a kid, my parents were like, in this life, if you don't know how to swim, you're fucking screwed. You're screwed. And so they put me into swimming school. For a while, it was it was great, you know? I, I think I even enjoyed it. But then one day, we were playing this little game where we had to swim to the bottom of the pool, grab a little toy from the bottom of the pool, and then bring it back up. Seems pretty easy. I, I think I do have a little competitive streak in me, okay? Yeah, I do. Not all the time. I wouldn't consider myself to be a competitive person, but I have a competitive streak in me. It comes out sometimes. I was feeling particularly competitive at swimming school one day and I wanted to win this game. So I swam to the bottom of the pool to grab the little toy and the toy kept slipping out of my hands, kept slipping out of my hands. I could not pick it up, but I was in a competitive frame of mind. So I was like, fuck no, I'm picking this thing up. I lost track of time and I was down there for too long and I start running out of breath and I, <clears throat> kind of gasp for air a little bit and I start sort of getting water in my mouth and it freaks me the fuck out. I have a vivid memory of being at the bottom of the pool and looking up and the surface just looking so far away and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna drown. I am going to die. So I start swimming back up without the toy. I didn't have the toy in my hand. And the pool was like six feet deep. 
And I was a kid, okay, I was like four or five years old. I swim to the top and I'm gasping for air and I just start bawling my eyes out. I get out of the pool, I don't tell the teacher shit. I go into the little room that all the parents would hang out in. I find my mom and I say, I'm never going back there. I'm done, I'm done with swimming school. And I was done and I never went back. There are not many coffee shops in my hometown. Maybe three, maybe, maybe. But there was one that stood out. On the weekends, my dad used to take me to this coffee shop to get me out of the house so I wouldn't be loud and disruptive while my mom was sleeping because my mom liked to sleep in on the weekends. So my dad and I would get up early and head over to this coffee shop and he would get a coffee and I would get a maple scone. Oh, the maple scone was so good. I really used to look forward to going to this cafe. I was a kid, I didn't really know what the vibe was, but. I still knew that the vibe was good, even though I was a kid, but it was really the maple scum. Like I really love the maple scum. I remember one day though, my dad and I show up as usual on a weekend to get the maple scone and to get him a coffee. And I take a bite into the maple scone and it has fucking walnuts in it. And it never had walnuts in it before. All of a sudden they decided that this maple scone needs to have walnuts in it. And as a five or six year old, I was devastated but I was not going to give up. So you know what I did? I started picking the walnuts out of it. I would like break off a piece and then pick out all the walnuts, eat it. It was a mess. Um, but now this coffee shop doesn't have the maple scone anymore. They kind of went corporate. I spent so much time at the park. I was a park rat. Like I would, I fucked around at the park. I'm climbing around everything. Like I am, it, it was like intense. I was making friends with random kids, doing flips on the jungle gym. Yeah, it was, it was intense, it was great. But sometimes there weren't any other kids to play with and my dad would have to play with me and he would do it. We'd play hide and seek, sometimes at night actually too. I had a lot of energy at night as a kid. I was a night owl for sure. And my dad used to take me to the playground to get all my energy out late at night and we'd play hide and seek in the dark. And weirdly, that's something I wouldn't even do as an adult. Like that kind of scares me as an adult. I wouldn't do that. As all kids do, I loved sugar as a kid. I was also a really picky eater. So all I ate was pasta with butter and cheese, vegetarian chicken nuggets, pizza and dessert. That was it. Oh, and peanut butter, a lot of peanut butter. Oh, pancakes, any food where the main ingredient is flour, I would eat it. That was all I ate. Sometimes as a treat, my dad would take me to this donut shop and I would get two donuts. I'd get one chocolate glazed and one classic glazed and I would eat both of them and then I would get so fucking grumpy. There was something about sugar that made me grumpy and my dad had to sort of draw the line with me. I'd be like, I don't know if you can have two donuts anymore because you get angry. Like the sugar would, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I don't even know why this happened. I would become aggressive. It wasn't just with the donuts though. Like my dad and I used to make chocolate chip cookies all the time, but we had to stop making them because I would eat them and then get angry. Sugar makes me angry, I guess. I would become fully aggressive and mean, like evil. Like I'd go in my room and like slam the door and like start crying or something. It was weird, but oh my God, the donuts were so good. I mean, all, to be honest, to me, all donuts are good. I really don't, I'm not picky with the donut. I'll eat any fucking donut. It's a donut, I'm eating it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. It's even fucking better than I remember. It's so good. Show all that sugar on the bottom. It's just soaked. It's soaked with icing. It's so good. I haven't had a donut in like years. Probably because when I was a kid, they made me evil. I was just gonna say that. So I'm gonna be super evil. Within the next hour or two, probably. I loved the mall as a kid. Oh my God, it was my favorite place to hang out. But it used to be the hot spot in my hometown. It was like the only place where there was energy. That's where the energy was, was at the mall. It had some phenomenal, phenomenal stores. It had a Hollister outlet, so clutch. Oh my God. The clothing brand Hollister was so trendy, hot, and cool, but it was a little pricey. And I was so lucky to have the Hollister outlet where everything is like half off in my childhood mall. It was 
amazing. Shut down now, it's not there anymore. There was a hot topic. I always wanted to be goth, like in my heart, I felt goth, but I never really had the courage to do it on the outside, you know? But I loved going into hot topic because I wanted to be goth. I always have had a little goth streak, but it's never fully come out. I think it will come out at some point. Actually, do you know what? No, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I think those years are over. You never know though. You never know. There was a Bath and Body Works. All the cool girls had a Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer in their bag. And I had to keep up with the cool kids. So I'd go into the Bath and Body Works and get a little hand sanitizer, five bucks. Were they five bucks? That seems expensive. Bath and Body Works hand sanitizers are like a dream for parents because all parents want their kids to do is wash their hands. It's like, please, can you just wash your fucking hands? And kids never want to wash their hands. But Bath and Body Works hand sanitizers were cool because they smelled good. There was like sugar cookie flavor and peach blossom flavor. And you know, the packaging was super cute and they came in all these cute colors and the kids wanted to collect them. What a dream come true that is for parents because all the kids had these in their bags and were using them left and right because they always wanted their hands to smell like Bath and Body Works. So that's actually amazing. Phenomenal and admirable business model. This mall was home to the best hot dog restaurant there ever was. It was called Fat Dog and it's gone now. And I'm so sad. I'm so sad because it was so good. Oh, it was so good. And I was a vegetarian growing up and they had vegetarian hot dogs and they were so beyond delicious. Oh my God, they had a smoky flavor. They were big, like, a lot of vegetarian hot dogs that you get at the grocery store are small. The texture is kind of off and they're just not satisfying. But this restaurant, Fat Dog, had the most delicious, large, satisfying vegetarian hot dogs. And I'd get a vegetarian hot dog with a side of fries and I would put so much mustard. Whoa, a lot of mustard on the hot dog. And I'd eat that hot dog and I'd get all charged up. And then I'd either go shop around with my parents or I'd go to a movie. A memorable movie I saw was Coraline, favorite movie of all time. One of my favorite movies of all time. I saw that in the theater probably, I don't know, six times, seven times. I made my dad take me to see it like three times and I made my mom take me to see it like five times. I couldn't stop. I also saw Diary of a Wimpy Kid at that movie theater and I had a huge, huge crush on the Wimpy Kid because it was a live action Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and oh my God, the actor in that was so, oh, I had a huge crush on him. Looking back, I'm like, wow, Emma, I don't know, I guess so, why? But, you know, the heart wants what it wants. I wanted the Wimpy Kid. Now I look back and Roderick from that movie was gorgeous, so my type, wow, so my type. Oh my God, that's my type. Now, whoa. Big epiphany. When I got a little bit older, my friends and I would take the train to go and hang out in other towns. To be honest, I'm really impressed that we figured out how to buy a train ticket and we figured out when to get off. Like, I, I don't know how we did that. There was some sketchy moments on the train. Like one time I was at one of the train stations and some lady just started yelling at my friends and I, I don't remember why. We were like screaming and crying. I don't remember, it's very, it's foggy. I blocked it out, but that happened at one point. One time I was by the train station and some guy like had a pair of like children's scissors and I had long blonde hair at the time. Like my hair was dyed blonde and he was like, I'm gonna cut a piece of your hair off. And he tried to cut a piece of my hair off. That was by the train station. But it was one of those things where it was like, okay, if we don't take the train, then we're not gonna get to go anywhere because there were so many years where we relied on our parents to drive us places and a lot of our parents were working. They couldn't just take us around town. Actually, a lot of my friends had stay at home moms, but the moms were like, fuck y'all, I'm going to yoga. I'm going to my hot yoga class and then I'm gonna go cheat on, on my husband with my dentist or something. Like, they, the, they were busy, okay, sorry. So when no parent would come to the rescue, we would take the train. My favorite restaurant as a kid was this restaurant called Crate Vine and they had a bunch of crepes. They had sweet crepes with Nutella and banana and ricotta cheese and chocolate and caramel and stuff like that. And then they had savory crepes, like crepes with mushrooms and cheese and eggs and all these, you know, crepes. It was a crepe restaurant. But as you know, I was a picky eater as a kid. So 
What I would get from this restaurant was pasta, penne pasta with butter and Parmesan cheese. I got a little older though and I started to branch out and I started getting something, something weird. Okay, I started getting something weird. I would order a plate of breakfast potatoes, like home fries, like breakfast potatoes. And then I'd get a side of curry sauce. One time I tried their curry sauce. I think my mom ordered a crepe that came with a side of curry sauce. I tried it with a potato once and I was like, holy fuck, this is good. And so then I started ordering that. When I'd go there, I'd get a massive plate of the potatoes and I would just dip the potatoes in this curry sauce Oh, the curry sauce is so good. I haven't had it in years. I think the reason why I haven't gone back is because I'm scared that they changed the recipe of the curry sauce or they changed the recipe of the potatoes. And I'm so afraid of that that I don't want to go and order it and then get disappointed. Wow, that's good. If I ever open a restaurant, which I won't, so don't worry, I won't. But if I ever did, that would be an appetizer. I would have potatoes, like crispy breakfast potatoes with curry sauce on them. Oh my God. What's crazy is that this crepe restaurant was my favorite restaurant and I never actually got a crepe there, ever. I was afraid of them. I was such a picky eater, you don't even know. Like, because like crepes were so thin that it kind of grossed me out. I was like, it's too thin. Don't add, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. It made sense to me as a kid. Speaking of food, another iconic food for me was the burrito. Although it took me some time to get into the burrito because when you look at a burrito from the outside, you don't know what's going on on the inside. Every bite is like mystery. You don't know what you're gonna get. That really freaked me out for a long time, but my dad ate so many burritos. And so it was always around me. And so eventually, I started taking little bites of my dad's burrito until it got to a point where I realized this is a food I like. And, oh, one of my go-to spots was La Corneta. I'd get a burrito with rice, beans, cheese, and that was it. But then when I got a little older, I started adding avocado. But the real star is the green salsa. Oh, the green, Salsa is so fucking good. I drenched the damn thing in the green salsa. It's so fucking good. Mm. We need more salsa. Tell me to get you. There you go. No. High dollar cluster. What the? <laughs> I did. Did I eat it? It's like the eighth wonder of the world. What a novelty. Life is just time in between burrito. Facts. When I was five, my parents got divorced and my mom moved to a town like 25 minutes away from my hometown. And this town had a different vibe. It was much less sleepy. My mom and I lived in this apartment for probably 10 years and wow, was it an experience. Was it an experience. So much happened at this apartment. I was there for middle school and for high school. My mom decorated it so nice on the inside. She really made it homey and cozy. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of fond and beautiful memories at this apartment. There are also some terrible memories. Let's be honest, there are some terrible memories. You know, number one, the outside isn't the most aesthetically pleasing. Listen, it's not an architectural statement, okay? It's not gorgeous. Now I realize how lucky I am to have lived in such a safe, cozy place. But as a kid, I was an asshole and I completely took it for granted. And I was kind of embarrassed of the way that my mom and I's apartment looked, which I'm not proud of. Like, I feel terrible about that. I feel terrible about that. I feel so ungrateful. I feel like an asshole. But, you know, my self-consciousness wasn't completely unwarranted because there were a few occasions where kids made fun of my mom and I's apartment. But, you know what? Most of the time it was behind my back. I only found out about that a few times. And for the most part, I never heard it. So, it's totally fine. It was probably happening more than I even realized, but again, it was totally fine. And funny enough, like kids made fun of my mom and I's apartment because it, you know, didn't have a proper lawn in the front and it was kind of, the paint was chipping and it was like, kind of smelled like weed all the time. Like it always smelled like marijuana. Like 
because my downstairs neighbors were major weed smokers. It had its own little charm. Some kids had some things to say about. But once they gave it a chance and they hung out there, they fell in love with it. They did. All of my friends wanted to hang out in my mom and I's apartment because it was cozy and my mom and I were so welcoming and loving and we always had good snacks and it was fun. Like we lived super close to the downtown area where all the restaurants were and stuff like that. And so it was easy to just walk downtown. You know what? It was a total vibe. But to circle back on the downstairs neighbor of it all. Yeah, we had some issues with the downstairs neighbor. Number one, the building was not soundproof. We could hear everything our downstairs neighbors were doing and they could hear everything we were doing. Like I would walk across the living room and they would call the police on my mom and I saying that I was stomping and making an inappropriate amount of noise. I'm not kidding. They would call the police. That was disturbing, but sometimes they wouldn't go that far. They wouldn't call the police. And instead they would take a broom and they would start hitting the ceiling with the broom and they would scream at me to shut up. Mind you, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not like, uh, like literally all it would take to get a noise complaint from them was to walk across the living room. So I got into this habit of just walking around on my tippy toes all the time. So, so I wouldn't anger the downstairs neighbors. But it was so unfair because it was like, okay, you guys are calling the cops on us, banging on your ceiling, yelling at us. Meanwhile, you're smoking like pounds and pounds of marijuana every single day. And it's coming up into my mom and I's apartment. So our apartment constantly smelled like weed, constantly. I was probably like stoned my entire childhood because there was so much weed, like my, it was terrible. It, that was a high stress environment. And as a result, there was tension with my mom and I, like she was always high alert, high stress, kind of upset. And then that rubbed off on me and I was always kind of high stress, but I actually lived there up until I moved to LA. So I lived there till I was like 16 and wow, was I happy to leave. Wow, was I happy to leave. And then my mom moved out a few years later and wow, was she happy to leave. My middle school is walking distance from my mom's apartment. And you know, I was kind of bummed when I went to see it because they totally made it fancy. Like it used to be kind of small and cute and they ripped it apart and made it all big and fancy. So I was like, oh, you know, it kind of lost its meaning. I remember I had to make a choice. I was either gonna go to middle school in the town where my dad lived or in the town where my mom lived. And it was this tough decision. But I remember I had a dream once that I went to the middle school in my mom's town and that's how I made my decision. I woke up one day and I was like, my dream told me I have to go to this middle school. Weird. But I do wonder sometimes, like, how would my life be different if I didn't go to that middle school? Ooh, I don't know. I do not know. Every single thing that happens in your life leads you to where you are in the current moment. So it's like, oh my God, if I didn't go to that middle school, what would be different? I was so excited for middle school though. I just wanted a locker. I really wanted a locker. I wanted to decorate my locker, super cute. And then I got there and I realized, wow, this is actually hell on earth. Middle school is probably the worst time in a kid's life. There are a few people who peak in middle school. Middle school is terrible. Everybody's insecure and awkward and confused. Nobody has social skills yet, so everyone's like mean to each other and mean to themselves. You know, nobody understands the weight of their words. It's a fucking mess. Everyone was wearing the Hollister Abercrombie t-shirt, the leggings or the skinny jeans with the Ugg boots. It was all, it was all happening. It was a vision. I played that game. I played that game. I wore the Ugg boots. I wore the leggings. I wore the skinny jeans. I wore the Hollister t-shirts. I did the whole thing. I fit in. I played the game. I totally played the game. Middle school was the worst time of my life. I was so insecure. I felt so bad about myself. It was fun though too. It was fun. It was emotionally turbulent, but there were fun memories. Like I think in middle school, you become a little bit more independent. You can't drive yet or anything, but you do become a little bit more independent. Your parents start letting you walk to school by yourself. Your parents start to let you hang out with your friends alone, maybe at the mall, maybe in the downtown area. Like you just start to have more freedom. That's the good part of middle school. After middle school, the kids whose parents were still at work would go to the youth center, myself included. It was like this community center that had a gymnasium, it had pool tables, it had 
a little library area where you could do homework. It was a safe place for the kids to hang out after school until their parents were ready to pick them up or ready to let them into the house, you know? I would go to the youth center after school almost every single day. And to be honest, I hated it. Like, I would have rather just gone home, but you know, my mom worked late, my dad worked late, I didn't have a choice. I'd sometimes do my homework there, but what I'd usually do is hang out with the kids, get into some trouble. We were allowed to come and go from the youth center as we pleased. We didn't have to stay there. We would leave and we would walk to the park or we would walk to the, you know, local coffee shop, to the downtown area. We would just, you know, walk around. And I remember one time it was late and me and this girl were hanging out at the youth center, just talking. And all of a sudden, this other girl comes up to us and says, you guys, you guys, my brother just called me and told me that there's a Louis Vuitton purse filled with cash by the local grocery store, okay? My friend and I were like, what? She was like, yeah, I can't go because I have to go home, but you guys should go get it and then we can split the money. And I got a bad feeling in my stomach. I was like, hmm, that doesn't feel right. That just doesn't feel right. But I was like, you know what, let's go. So me and her walked probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes to the downtown area where the grocery store was. And it was probably 5.30 PM. It was starting to get dark. It was like winter time. And I remember we're walking down the main street and it's just deserted. Like no one is around. There are no cars. Every parking spot is open. It is deserted. And we approach this grocery store and there's no Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> there's no Louis Vuitton bag. And so we're looking around, looking on the ground, like where's this Louis Vuitton bag? All of a sudden, I hear a car pull up and park in one of the empty parking spots right next to us. Now, mind you, there are rows and rows and rows of parking spots on the street, empty. The street was deserted. But this car decided to pull up right next to us. And I get chills on my spine and I'm like, fuck. And I turn around and I kid you not, it is a man in a white van straight out of the fucking news, okay? Like everything that your parents warn you about. If a guy tells you to get into their van, you don't get in. If you see a white van, you run. Like it's just, it's always been that. It's a stereotype. I immediately am like, hey, to my friend. She didn't even notice. I was like, hey, look. She turns around, she's like, mm, I don't know. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is not good. We need to go. She's like, but we didn't find the purse. I'm like, we're not fucking finding it. We need to go. We start running down the street. He pulls out of the parking spot and starts driving next to us. I'm like, fuck. We start running faster. I look to my right and there's a parking lot that has a chain blocking it. So cars can't drive into the parking lot, but obviously we're on foot. So I'm like, let's go. So we jump over the, the chain and we start running through the parking lot. He can't follow us. I lived pretty close to the downtown area. So I said, let's run to my mom and I's apartment and hide in the garage. My mom wasn't home, so she couldn't let us in, but I was like, let's hide in the garage. So we cut through this parking lot. We get onto my street, okay? Imagine this, we're on my street, and at the end of my street was another street. So it was sort of like a T, shaped like a T. So we're running down my street, and then we see at the end of the street, the white van drive by. It was looking for us, and we hid behind cars for a little while, and then we went back to the youth center and had a good story for the other kids. We were actually at risk of getting kidnapped. Like I, I, I really, to this day, I have so many questions about how that happened. But listen, that was a freak incident, okay? Most of the time, the downtown area was a total vibe. Okay, it was a total vibe. I spent so much time in the downtown area. There was so much to do. The street was constantly infested with middle schoolers. There were middle schoolers everywhere, which was kind of fun because it was like fun to see kids from your school when you're not in school. I don't know, it just, it feels fun. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but you get what I mean. There was this candy shop called Didums, and kids would go there after school to get candy, but a lot of times we didn't have money, okay? We don't have jobs, we're kids. We're in middle school. So a lot of kids would steal from Dittums. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm airing out everyone's dirty laundry. A lot of kids would steal from Dittums. Now, here's the thing. In a way, I can't blame them because it sort of felt like the only option. I will say though, I never stole. I was too scared. I did not have it in me. The cool kids stole from Dittums. I wasn't cool enough to be stealing. In fact, I never had a stealing phase. I know a lot of kids 
who had a phase where they were stealing everything. I wanted to, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I was too afraid of being yelled at. I didn't like being yelled at, so I never stole. But kids would steal like saltwater taffy a lot because they were really easy to grab and steal. And to me, I was like, I don't even want that. Like saltwater taffy's gross. Like. Ew. But Didim's also had a lot of other fun stuff. They had a bunch of toys and costumes and stuff. Kids would hang out in there for hours and just, oh God, shove things in their pockets. I don't know, make out in a corner. It was a mess. It was a mess. Didim's was a mess. This? I actually want it. No? Come on. Sandwich. I need to get out of here. It just keeps getting weirder. I'm going into all these things, these places for kids. It's weird. But there were some fun free options for us. Okay, for example, there was this little cake shop called Nothing Bunt Cakes. I actually think it's a chain. It's not like this cute little hometown, hometown spot. I actually think it's fully a chain, but they always had cake samples out and the middle schoolers would go in and get little cake samples, myself included. I loved it. It was always a different flavor. Sometimes red velvet, sometimes lemon cake, sometimes mocha, always something new, always something different. And we'd go in and we'd grab like as many samples as we could. Sometimes the lady at the front would be gone. She'd be in the back, like working on something else. And so we could take like four samples and then we'd run out. And then we'd head next door to a cafe where we would either get a free cup of water with ice, or if we had some money, we would get passion fruit iced teas. That was like the hot thing to get in middle school, passion fruit iced tea. Middle school really is limbo. You have a little bit of independence, but not enough to feel fully free. You're starting to grow up. You're starting to feel more like an adult, but you're not really an adult. You're not an adult at all. You're still very much a child, but you're, but you're not completely a baby anymore. You know, I think it was particularly challenging for me because I went through puberty so late. I was a very late bloomer. I didn't get my period until I was like 16. It all happened for me very late. But you know what I did to make up for my late puberty hit? Get my fricking nails done. In middle school, I started getting acrylic nails. It was my favorite thing in the world. And it made me feel a little older. It was like, yeah, I may not have my period and I may be really short and I may not have boob boobies yet, but I have really long acrylic nails and I would choose the worst colors, such as neon orange, such as a terrible shade of turquoise. Like it was my way of expressing myself. I loved it. I think I'm finally at a place now where I can really appreciate my hometown and find peace in my hometown. For a long time, I would experience negative emotions when I would come home because I don't know, I had some rough memories associated with my hometown, as we all do. Returning to my hometown made me feel like a kid again which for a long time I did not like because I was trying to do the opposite. I was trying to spread my wings and be an adult. I also was sick of it. You know, I spent my whole childhood in my hometown. So I was sick of it. Now I come back and I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. I really appreciate it now. Oh, I love it. I'm able to see it through such a positive, loving, happy lens. And what a joy that is. But it did take me some time. Yeah, you know, I still have my bad memories, but they don't bother me so much. Good shot. 